Hey everyone, Zach here, and welcome to Lesson 76. In this video, we will be updating our unit UI to include our fear status, a fear modifier, and we will be updating our fear functions from the last video. That said, fire up your editor and let's get started. Hey everyone and welcome back to the editor. So in this video we're going to set up our UI so that we can see what our unit's fear level and fear modifiers are. And this is going to reveal a couple of issues that we need to take care of as well. So let's knock that out and I'll tell you guys what to test to see these errors. So let's go to our widgets, let's go to our unit info HUD, again horrible naming convention. And we're going to make our lives a tiny bit easier in here, we're just going to copy and paste the fatigue box with the two spacers around it back into our details vertical box here. And the spacers, of course, did not come into the right spot for some reason. So we're just going to move one of those spacers down. There we go. So this will be our fear. Maybe stress would be a better word, actually. But we're going to call this our fear detail box. Actually, our fear box. I don't actually call it detail anywhere else. So in this box, what we're going to have is a another set of text. So I'm just going to copy that, and I'm just going to paste it down there. So this first one will be our fear level text. And we're just going to rename this as fear level. We'll go down to our progress bar. This will be our fear prog bar. I'm going to change the color and opacity of this to just a yellowish color. I'm just going to up it a bit. Maybe not that far. And then our final text box will be our fear modifier text. And here I'm just going to write fear modifier x or multiply 9.99 all right, now we need to do some bindings. Let's do the fear modifier first, just to knock that out. We'll create a new binding. We'll name this binding our get fear modifier. And our get fear modifier is going to be a little bit different than our normal ones. We're going to have a few extra nodes in here. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get a reference to our unit. We then want to get from this our AI controller because in our AI controller, we store our fear modifier. I'm going to need a lot more room than I've given myself, by the way. So let's get our fear modifier. From our fear modifier, we're going to want to do a two text from float. And we're going to want to expand this out. And yes, we want half to even. We don't want always signing. We want grouping. We want a minimum of one integral digit and a maximum of, well, in the final version, we're going to want only one, but I'm going to put this as two, and I'm not going to change it just because you might want to use a different set of numbers. And then we are going to change our minimum to two and our maximum to two. So these last two are the numbers that will appear after the decimal point. And I always want two numbers on there. So even if it's like 1.00, I want that 0, .00 on screen. And I don't want it to go above that second zero. All right, next, I'm going to take from this. Actually, I'm just going to right-click first. And I'm going to do an append. And I want a string append here. And in the A, I'm going to write fear modifier colon x. Actually, I'm going to use a little x. And then from this return value, I'm going to plug into the B. It will automatically convert it for me. Just line these all up again. And the reason why I don't want that space is I just want that to read as fear modifier multiplied by whatever our modifier is. All right, now let's line that back up, drag off of here, and allow it to convert it to a string. And I'm just going to line all of that up. That takes care of our fear modifier. 
Also, I'm going to close out everything up here because there's a lot of stuff we've left open over the, you know, working on this. Next, we are going to do our progress bar, and that's the easy one. So let's go back to the main window here. Let's grab our progress bar on our percent. Let's do create binding, and this will be set here prog bar. And this one's relatively easy. Grab your unit reference, get your fear value. And remember, because we're using zero to one, we're using proportions, we can just plug that into there and we are set up. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to test this. So make sure to lower your unit's fatigue levels back to zero, test this out, target a unit with your infantry unit, have it attack, and see what errors come up. All right, if you went and tested it, you should have noticed that there were a few errors. One, our fear modifier gets really high, and two, if you had the unit info window open for the unit being attacked after it got killed, well, yes, the window went blank, but when you close that window out, you couldn't move around the map anymore. So let's resolve that you couldn't move around the map anymore problem. And the way we're going to take care of that is we're going to go back to our main event graph. And just with our close button, we're going to add a custom event. We're going to name this custom event close. And we are just going to plug that into our set input mode here. Let's compile and save this. And next, let's go to our unit master. And in our unit master, we destroy our unit in the reduce health. So I already have reduce health open from last video. We destroy it at the very end here. And this is what's causing the issue. So all we're going to do is we're going to move this along a bit. Actually, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to only move the top bits along. Put a second reroute in here so it looks a bit neater. There we go. And then I'm going to break this. I am going to get from my references, my unit HUD info, and I'm going to call the close uh, event that we just made a moment ago. Plug that into there, and plug that into there. All right, that resolves the issue with the window staying open after a unit is destroyed. All right, compile and save that. Next, let's take care of some of the other issues, such as the modifier getting massive. You also might have realized that the fear reduction continues, or reduced fear continues, even after their fear hits zero, which does add some issues to the game in, in the sense that it is a resource that we are using up over and over again. So what we're going to do is we are going to go to our AI controller, and we are going to make some changes here. So we do need our set fear timer open, we need our decrease fear, and we need our increase fear. So since we're in our set fear timers already, what we are going to do is we are going to break this. We are going to put a branch into here. And we're going to move everything else a little bit further down just to give us a bit of room to play with. And the true is going to go directly into there. The false, we will take care of pausing this timer. So we're going to be a little bit lazy. And we're going to take this decrease fear timer handle and the pause, replicate it down there, plug that into the false there. And then we are going to put a return node at the end of this. There we go. So what does our condition need to be? Our condition needs to be our fear level. So we're going to get a unit reference. We are going to check our fear. We want to know, is this less than zero? I'm sorry, greater than zero, not less than. Is it greater than zero? If it is greater than zero, we want to activate this timer. If it is not, we want to make sure that timer is paused and not doing anything. Pausing versus invalidating will still eat up some resources, but much less than having this loop every whatever time we get from our set uh, timer speed. So that takes care of one of the issues, at least now, partially, when we have got our fear down to zero, this will stop. However, it actually won't without one more step. So let's go to our decrease fear timer here. 
or DQ Sphere, that is. At the very end, what we want to do is we want another branch here. And on this branch, what we're going to do is we are going to set status off the true. So just drag off here, do set status. And this, when our condition is met, which we'll take care of in a second, we'll loop back through our set status. It will hit our fear timers. It will see that our fear is zero, and it will pause the timer. So what is our condition here? Well, it's going to be pretty much the same condition as before, except for I'm going to be a bit paranoid this time. We're going to do get fear, and we are going to check is our fear value less than, and I do mean less than this time, or equal to zero. Now, really, we could just do equal to in this case, and I know previously I said with floats, you should do uh, less than and equal to or greater than and equal to depending on the situation. We could get away with using equal to because we have clamped our value here. By clamping our value, we actually can't get below zero. But I'm, I'm being a bit paranoid and prefer to do it this way just to be on the safe side. Now, the other issue we had and one that I want to resolve and you might not want to you might want to leave what we currently have is that our fear modifier can get really really rather massive so what i want to do is i want to cap it at four and the reason i want to cap it at four is simply because if it goes if it's at four then we are gaining a hundred percent of fear an hour you might want because the battles might not last an in-game hour you might want to cap it uh, at a higher number or not cap it at all. I'm just going to cap it to make my life a little bit easier, I think. So I'm just going to move this all down a bit. And what I could do is I could go back in here and put clamps on each of these, but I do not want to do it that way. I want to break this set fear. I want to do a branch here. And what I want to do is I want to get my fear modifier and I'm just going to duplicate that over here. I want to check, is it greater than or equal to 4? If it is greater than or equal to 4, then what I want to do is I want to set my fear modifier to B4. And then I'm going to drag off this execute, plug into our set there. And then we still need to handle this false, so I'm just going to put a reroute on the other side of my fear modifier setter. And I'm just going to plug that into there. Now, that's done. After I put these reroutes in, I need to highlight all of this, control C, copy it, go to my increase fear. I'm just going to paste that up there for now. And then I'm going to move this set fear down slightly. Ooh, that was maybe more than I meant. There we go. I'm going to move it there. I'm going to break this, plug that into my branch there, and then just move all of this down here. Actually, I still need a bit more room. So before I move it down, I'm just going to drag this over a bit. There we go. Now I'm going to move this down here. And I'm going to drag off this reroute pin that we've copied in and plug it into my set fear. That will take care of uh, all of the things we need to do in this video. Now let's test this out again to make sure it works. I'm going to go back to the unit master, and because in this version, I actually have yet to set my fatigue back to zero, I'm going to do that now. So my fatigue is at zero, I'm going to compile, and I'm going to hit play. All right, let's just check our infantry unit's fear level. So no fear, we have the standard fear modifier of one. All right, let's send it to attack this unit here. And then I'm going to open up this unit. Oh, I did not deselect the unit like I thought I did. So let's send it to attack that unit there. Deselect the unit. Select that unit's profile. You see the fear is increasing. As it gets killed, the window is removed. Let's actually check this unit. Its fear is 1.4. So I'm slightly concerned that it is not reducing properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the game. I'm going to go to my unit controller. I am going to go to my decrease fear. And I am going to put a breakpoint here and one breakpoint here. I'm going to remove this breakpoint partway in. 
I'm going to hit play. I'm going to go back to this window, and I'm going to set this to 3. I have no idea if it's the correct unit or not. We'll find out in a moment. And now I'm just going to find where my units are that I've been scrolling around a bit here. Let's grab this infantry unit. Let's send it to attack that unit. Make sure to deselect the unit. And let's open up this profile. We see the fear is increasing. You can see the yellow starting to show up a bit. And, yep, that's our infantry unit we selected. So I'm just going to move this to the other window. We now have a value, it's relatively small, of 0 0.00184. So I'm going to try to set my delta fear to be at 25%. Okay. Step through. This should return false. It does. Hit resume. And whatever time you have, it will loop back through in a moment. There we go. It's looped back through. And we are setting it to 0 0.003. I'm going to remove this breakpoint, and I'm just going to let the game run for a moment. Eventually, we will hit this mark. And when this happens, we will know that the fear timer has, a reduced fear timer, has indeed turned on off all right so while we wait for that there we go that actually happened before i thought it was going to it finally hit that true so we know that we are turning off our fear timers but let's step through to make sure so we're going to step through each of these i'm just going to quickly go through them and there is our fatigue or hunger sorry all right now let's go through the next one slowly so we enter here we check are we in combat we are not in combat, so we pause our increase to your timer, which we've already done. We then check what our unit's fear levels are. Are we greater than zero? We are not, so we pause this timer. All right, so that takes care of what we need to do for this lesson. All of that said, if you've liked this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to help support this channel out, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe and notify icon so you know when the next tutorial is out. And, as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next video, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.